I mean, you started at 14 and, and work your way down and you notice that nobody jumps in front, right? And, and then you get to a certain level. Um, clearly the big surprise was when Detroit fell back, right? Um, and then you start to realize that, you know, you're, you're left, right? And you've got a chance. Um, and of course, human nature, right, sets you up to get greedy. And, um, you know, so when it was that the two, the two teams left, you know, yeah, <laughs> one in number one, right? And, um, you know, for a second, you know, uh, there was a little bit of, oh, shucks, right? Didn't get it. Uh, but overall, you know, to go from four and not to go back to eight, and then to go from four to go to number two, you know, it's it's an incredible uh, stroke of luck. You know, I wish there was some way we could have prepared for it and, you know, done something to improve our luck other than lose games. Incredibly excited, you know, about getting, you know, a pick like that. And, um, you know, now, of course, you know, there'll be the rest of Chicago and then there's a lot of work to do coming up. Mitch, good to see you. Um, what is your initial thought on this draft class here and, and more specifically Scoot and Brandon? You know, I'm not sure how much I want to comment. You know, we've still got a ways to go. I think publicly, you know, if you just looked at the mock drafts or you just followed the draft, I think a lot of people would say that, you know, there's a clear cut top three and then, you know, there's the next level, right? Um, I think if, even if we would have ended up at four, you know, or five or six, I really believe that we would have gotten a good player, a really good player. So. You know, the top players are not here in Chicago. Uh, we've, of course, you know, scouted them, you know, throughout the year. Uh, but we don't know them. We haven't been up close to any of them. Um, you know, well, we have a bunch of picks. You know, we're going to focus on all the picks. But, you know, spend an awful lot of time on number two. And, um, you know, get up close, you know, with who we consider to be the, the prospects you know, hopefully get to work them out. You know, you're allowed to bring them in twice, uh, interview them, and, um, you know, begin the process. You know, I'm not sure the agents, representatives, you know, they're going to have a lot to say in, you know, exactly how this unfolds. You know, I'm hopeful that, that it doesn't get dragged out until the week before the draft where we don't get a chance to, spend time with them and work them out until then. I'm hopeful that it happens much sooner, right? But, you know, we can only control what we can control. I apologize if uh, too soon, but last year, I believe you said there's normally just a cutoff of where the elite guys are in each draft class. Do you, do you have an idea in your head of where that number is this year already? Uh, I'm sorry, say it again? I believe last year you said there's normally a cutoff, a number where the elite guys are or where the league guys are in the NBA draft. Do you have a number in your head already of where that cutoff number is already, or are you guys still in the process of uh, evaluating everyone? Well, I've got a number in my head, right, um, which I won't share. Um, I did talk a little bit about, generally speaking, and what mock drafts you know, say. You know, Take that with a grain of salt. But in my mind, yeah, I've got a – a feel for what I consider a cutoff to be. Having said that, like I said, even if we ended up with four, five, six, or seven, or even eight, I thought we would have got a good player. Mish, there seem to be a lot of good point guards in this top of the draft. Obviously, you have a, a very good all-star point guard. Could you see a situation which you would still draft that position and, and try to make that work? Yeah, yeah, I could see it. Um, you know, we're, we're getting a little bit more advanced and putting this team together. You know, I think three years ago or even two years ago, I would have said without question <laughs> that we're going to take the best available player. And that that's been, you know, our position for the last three or four years when you're trying to accumulate talent. And, you know, I don't think we're where we need to be from a talent level, but we've got a lot more talent now than we did two or three years ago. So I think we can be a little bit picky, uh, you know, 
and take into consideration, you know, not only the overall talent, but also the position. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Mitch, good to see you again. Uh, I know that uh, you, you mentioned there's a lot of work to do in the draft process, but knowing that you have the number two pick, does this also now give you guys, afford you guys the luxury of, yes, you're going to spend time on the number two, but with those other picks that you have, you can also focus a lot of effort and attention on what you may do late first round and with the three second rounders you have as well. Yeah, the draft just got a lot better for us, right? By just sitting in our hotel room. You know, we went from, you know, four and, you know, in the late first and 34 and 37, you know, we went to two, right? So the draft, you know, got a lot better for us. Um, you know, the back half of the draft hasn't changed. Our second first round pick. Uh, but once again, you know, we just got to Chicago and uh, yesterday was the, the first day where, you know, the players that were originally invited to Chicago got a chance to get on the court. Uh, although they didn't play, they started to show, you know, some skill work and some two on two, three on three. So, you know, we watched the kids all, all year long, right? Uh, most of them, as you might expect, you know, are, you know, freshmen that, that are one and done. So, you know, we don't have a three or four year body of work to study. So the process, you know, is going to get pretty hectic uh, going forward. You know, like, like you said, we have five picks, right? And, you know, we're going to bring in well over 100 players, maybe even close to 150 to Charlotte to work out. So, um, but that's a lot of currency. I'm not going to say we're going to have five 19-year-olds on our team next year. I think that's a little unrealistic. But, yeah, you've got that many picks and you've got some cap room and you've got you know, young players in a team like I think we have right now that we're pleased with. Um, that's a lot to work with. And if I could just throw a quick follow up, is there a temptation to try to throw a crowbar into San Antonio and pry that number one pick away in a trade? Well, I mean, yeah, there's a there's a temptation. Yeah, I, I just don't think that's realistic, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know, if if we had the number one pick. You know, I'm, I would take phone calls because that's my job, but I probably wouldn't listen very hard. Hey, thanks. Hey, Mitch, um, with such a clear cut, number one, how valuable is it for you to be picking two to sort of know who's available and, and be able to kind of focus your search and not have to worry about who's getting. Yeah, most times, you know, more times than not, the, the number one pick. Generally speaking, you kind of know who it's going to be. You know, yes, you know, this is clear cut. So, you know, that that player will not be a factor. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll give us a little bit of time to focus and sort through what we got to sort through. Um, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about the mock drafts and there only being three players and then there's a, a drop off or whatever. You know, I'm not going to say that's the case. So we will, you know, spend time on some other players. Um, that we consider, you know, top 10 players and we hope to bring them in. You know, once again, representatives that might not cooperate, but we hope to bring them in and just make sure that we're going down the right path. 